times 1. Don't forget to multiply by 1. That's the other mass, right? This is this mass. That is that one, right? Uh, divided by 6.38. E6 squared. Now, can I safely square that without parentheses? You think you can't, but you can. You can square that without parentheses because it evaluates, the order of operations really is that it evaluates scientific notation first, right? That's all one number. So that is all you have to type. What do you get for the force of gravity on a one kilogram object at Earth's surface? 9.78, which rounds to 9.8 newtons. Is that what we expected? Is that what we expected the force to be? Yeah, I'm thinking we did, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, second, not second, right? So 6.67 e minus 11 times. 5.97 e 24 times 1, don't forget to multiply by 1, divided by 6.38 e 6 squared. Yeah? I've done it twice. If you haven't done it once, you're a slacker and I hate you. Oh, it was that out loud? I don't hate you. I love you if you're trying. If you haven't tried yet, I hate you. Are we, is everybody getting something like 9.78? Yeah. yeah. Don't, for, don't worry about, you could, I mean, it doesn't hurt to put parentheses around this. You could. That would make sure. But I, I can tell you, rest assured, it does scientific notation before it squares numbers. Okay? So there we go. And it is 9.8 newtons. What is the advantage of this formula? It's way harder to use then weight equals mg. What is the strength of this formula? Why would you use this sometimes and not something else? To find out gravity, some distance other than this distance from the center of the Earth? Like at the moon, where, what's the Earth's gravity at the moon? Right? What if we're trying to figure out the force of gravity on the surface of the moon? Yeah, we could do it that way too, right? It'd be different. We could figure it out with this formula. Right? So this formula is universal. The one that we did before, the weight equals m times g, that's specific to the Earth. It's a simple one that we teach you before we teach you the scary one. Yeah? This one's a scary one, and it's beautiful, and it works all the time. But you have to know that constant to plug in there. Yeah? So is it kind of like the view of force that's keeping the moon from hitting the Earth? Like you're pushing it forward? Is it, is it yeah, 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 yeah. So what's keeping the moon from hitting the Earth? It's its own inertia. It wants to go in a straight line, right? And so when the gravity pulls on it, it just changes the direction of it, right? It doesn't change the speed. It's just like a string. Instead of gravity, it's a string, right? So that's the next kind of problem we're going to solve is how do you solve orbit, right? That's the... Yeah. I don't think I did a good explanation of the F word, too. I, I said centrifugal is the F word, right? But the important thing about the centrifugal force is that if you are in a frame of reference, say a car that's going around a corner, you can just pretend that centrifugal force is a real force, and it works. Right? But it's not like a real magic. There's no magical magnet pulling things to the outside of curves. So now you get it, right? Okay. So the sheet of everything, um, take out your your uh, gravity and circular motion, right? This thing's circular motion. Turn it over on this side. Let's put some masses up there. Just go ahead and just go up there, right? Let's put some masses up there. So let's go to, uh, these are things you're gonna need, okay? So let's go to Google, which is, you know, recognized as the world source for everything, right? And let's look at the mass. Mass of the Earth in kilograms is 5.97. So write that down at the bottom here, okay? Mass of the Earth, right, is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, right? And then we can go in here, and I think we need to know the mass of the moon. 7.36 times 10 to the 
7.36 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. So the moon is no, uh, you know, no fainting lily. It's a, only it's a little more than a hundredth the mass of the Earth. So it's pretty big. Okay. I think we need to know the mass of the sun. Mass of the sun, 1.99. 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And when we talk about, when we do an astrophysics show, we're going to talk about stuff in terms of the mass of the sun, right? Uh, how about radii? Right? So the radius of the Earth. Let's look that up. And this is sort of crazy. Um, radius of the sun. Okay, how about radius of the Earth? Why is it not liking me? Is it because I say kilograms? It's like, what's the radius in kilograms? How about meters? There we go. Okay. So the, the radius of the Earth, we could write that it's 6 point, we'll just say 6.38 E6 meters. What am I doing? I'm being lazy, aren't I? Doesn't E just mean times 10 to the? Yeah. Okay. I don't know that I, I you know, I don't know that like people that write the AP tests think that that's cool, but I do. Okay. Moon. A uh, moon is miles. In miles? No. Come on. What are you thinking? So that is uh, 1.74. Is 1.74 times 10 to the 6 meters. Is that right? So again, it's like the moon is on the order of the size of the Earth, right? Okay. How about the radius of the sun? I don't know if we need that, but let's put it on there to feel like we've done everything. And then you won't have to look these guys up. So sun... Six point nine six times ten to the geez, what is that? Eighth? Is that right? That's a big old sun, right? More about the calculator. You like that? Yeah. All right, let's try some whiteboard problems. Let's try a little whiteboard problem here. 